Well, nice catch. Thank you guys for catching it. So we're going to pick up right where I was at. Uh, the people were astonished at the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And um, I believe I said that there are 55 Bible verses that mention the word doctrine. And, it, and guess what? You can go and look at them. God cares about doctrine. And He teaches doctrine to those who are weaned from the breast. Okay? Go read that in Isaiah. It's not for children. And you can remember Paul saying... Uh, to the Corinthians, you're babes in Christ. But, you know, they couldn't handle the meat. But there comes a time where you need to switch from milk to meat. All right? And um, so, the doctrine, and this is what Paul talks about, sound doctrine. When you read Genesis through Acts, Hebrews through Revelation, it's sound. Meaning, it is... Uh, I, I like to use the example of a musician, right? I played for, I played for over, my gosh, 16 years. And when, uh, when anything was ever unsound, it was like, a, you know when like a note's off and it just makes you cringe? Well, that's what happens when you deal with unsound doctrine. And how that happens is when you mix these two doctrines together, guess what? You're going to start hearing those noises in your ear. That just, oh, it makes me cringe. Because... This doctrine given to Israel is not given to the body of Christ, which is what God's dealing with today. All right? So we're going to switch to doctrine number two, which is the doctrine for the body of Christ. This was written to the church, the body of Christ. It was committed to the Apostle Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles. He was under grace, and he was given the dispensation of the grace of God that we are living in today. So I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 1, notice in verse 11, Paul says, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust... So this glorious gospel of Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, it was committed to Paul's trust. It wasn't committed to Peter, James, and John. All right? Uh, Paul tells us that we're under grace. We're not under the law. Let's turn to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And notice in verse... 14. For sin shall not have dominion under, over you, for ye are not under the law, but ye are under grace. Grace and law do not mix. They are completely opposed to one another. Law requires works. Grace is a gift. You can't do anything for a gift. It's just given to you and you receive it. Works, you do something, and then you earn it. And uh, that is a doctrine that a lot of people are confused about. And why are they confused? Because they're missing what God gave us in 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. All we're doing is we're simply rightly dividing truth from truth. It is true that Christ was on the law. It was true that Christ came to Israel only here. And that it's true that it wasn't until the Apostle Paul that it was revealed that Christ died for all, not just Israel, all of the world's sins. And that here it's true that Paul's under, that we live under grace. Um, so let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. And let's let Paul, let's let the word explain it. Okay? Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to read a, a few verses here. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to you, word, how that by revelation... He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote it afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, 
which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in the Christ by the gospel. Whereof I, Paul, was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, which is given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, Paul, who am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So, there is so much to unpack, and honestly, in the book of Ephesians, we could spend, quite honestly, a year (laughs) going through the book of Ephesians. But the things I want to highlight is who is he speaking to? He's speaking to Gentiles. Who was Peter, James, and John commanded not to go in the way of? Gentiles. Truth. Truth for Israel, truth for the body of Christ. So, when you read uh, Paul's epistles, you know that this is where God is writing to you, and that's where you get your doctrine from. So, we've established established two doctrines. One, children of Israel. Two, the body of Christ. Here's the third doctrine I'm going to give you. And that is what I'm calling the doctrine of men. And this is what they do. They take this doctrine over here from the children of Israel. They take this doctrine over here for the body of Christ. And they mix them. They mix them together. They're mixing grace with law. And I'm telling you, it is the most frustrating thing because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And quite honestly, that's not of God. That's of men. And what did we establish earlier? Who's the spirit behind that? It's of the devil. You look at in Matthew, when Jesus was tempted in the desert, what did Satan do? He quoted scripture. What did he do? He twists the scripture. Okay? So let's take a look at that. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Now, in the context here, Mark chapter 7, we're going to read verses 5 through 8. The Pharisees and the scribes, the Jewish religion leaders, are questioning Jesus, okay? Um, And in verse 5, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? I'm highlighting the word traditions. There's a lot of traditions today that are being kept. But eat bread with unwashed hands. Verse 6, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, and ye may keep your own tradition. So here are some Jewish religious leaders that Christ basically says, You're worshiping me in vain, and all you do is you forsake the word of God, the commandments of God, and you just want your man-made traditions. And what did he say? They honor me with their lips, but where are their hearts? Far from me. So, we're reading doctrines of men, and it's lying in with traditions. And what do they do? They take parts of the word of God, they take parts of these scriptures, but then they make up their own interpretations about what it says. Oh, God didn't really mean this. What he meant was this. That's the underlying root of what they say. Why don't you just let the word of God say what it says? It's a lot easier to believe what it says, where it says it to, who it says it to. So commandments and doctrines of men, and these are... These guys were quote-unquote believers in God, are they not? Yeah, 
They were. They were believers in God. Now, were they doing what God required of them? Absolutely not. So, there's another word for the doctrines of men. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to be reading a few verses here. 1 through 6. Paul is writing to Timothy. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brother in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, wherein to thus has attained. So Paul says... There's going to come a time where people are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils, doctrines and commandments of men, same thing. Why do I know that? Look at verse 2 and 3. They speak lies and hypocrisy. And do you know a religion that forbids people to marry? Do you know a religion that tells you abstain from meats? I'm just asking you the question. You can fill in the blank. This is what the Bible says. All right? The underlying theme for all of these people turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, we're going to read verses 15 and 16. Peter says, "...an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation..." Even as our brother, beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking them of these things, in which some things are hard to be understood. Now pay attention to the next rest of the verse. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do all the other scriptures unto their own destruction. That word rest is to twist, okay? What they're doing is people that are unlearned and unstable, they're resting the scriptures into what they believe they think the word of God says rather than what it says. And that's where you get religions, that's where you get doctrines and commandments of men, that's where you get these doctrines of devils, and here in lies what I said at the very beginning of this message, Jesus, Peter, and Paul all warned about is that there are going to be people doing these things falsely. And the one thing that they'll deny is the power of God. Uh, let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I know this is a lot of subject matter, uh, I only have uh, three more verses and we're going to wrap this thing up, all right? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Paul says he's talking about the last days and he's talking about men, okay? These godly men in verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. So what Paul is saying is that there are these men that have a form of godliness, but they are denying the power thereof. What's the power that they're denying? They're denying the power of God, which is the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God on salvation. They deny the gospel. They'll say, yeah, Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, but you got to do this. You got to do that. And they are putting things on people and teaching them doctrines that were never meant for them, telling them, but you got to keep this. you got to go fill in the blank and all these commandments over here. And there are people that live that way today. And what does the Bible say? It says that they're under a curse. So in closing, uh, there's two passages of Scripture I want you to grab. Grab Romans 16 in one hand 
And 2 Corinthians 13 and the other. Romans 16 in one hand. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and the other. In Romans 16, we're going to be reading verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, Paul speaking, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I remember when I read Romans uh, 16, verse 17, when I started taking the Bible seriously. And I started reading Romans through Philemon. And what happened very quickly was I was starting to mark a lot of the doctrines that I had learned in my religious bringing. And I came to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, (laughs) what am I going to do? Thank God I found people like, Brother Richard Jordan and Obed Kirkpatrick and Steve Atwood and Mark Rumfellow and Joey and all these other guys because they are observing the doctrine that was given to our Apostle Paul. So, side note, if you don't know Romans 2 Philemon, how in the world are you going to be able to mark and avoid? You need to get in Romans 2 Philemon and understand that doctrine so that you can learn how to mark and avoid all the other doctrines that are being taught out there that aren't meant for you. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, notice in verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Context here, the Corinthians were questioning Paul's apostleship. And there's a lot of people that question the authority of the, of the, the apostleship of Paul. But notice what he says in verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your, yourselves how that Jesus Christ is in you except, you, except you be reprobates? So, if you're anything like me, and you've been brought up in various religious and have accepted all these doctrines that you accepted to be free and true without examining themselves, well, here's the underlying thing. If the Bible does not back up your beliefs, well then, the Bible's right and you're wrong and you need to to unlearn some things. I've had so many experiences that I could not back up by the Scriptures. So you know what I had to do? I forgot my past. I forgot about all those experiences. And I I put my trust in what the Word of God says, not in my religious experiences. So, you need to learn Romans 2 Philemon so that you can mark and avoid things that are not meant for you, and you need to examine yourself whether you're in the faith. Are you saved? Have you trusted in the gospel of Christ? What do you believe? Do you believe what the Bible means, what it says, or do you only believe what you think it says? That's where 2 Timothy 2.15 comes into play, where you got to be a workman. You got to put the work into studying the Bible. You need to study. You need to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. So, we've covered a lot. We've covered three doctrines one is for the nation Israel, one for the body of Christ, and you got doctrines of men out there. Which one are you following? Which one are you putting your trust in? Which one are you believing in? And just to summarize and close this whole entire losing my religion series, I want to give you these last thoughts. The word religion mentioned five times in your King James Bible. Five times. One, it's with Saul. He said, I lived as a a Pharisee, the the straightest sect of the Jews, okay? And when he was in that Jewish religion, he profited much. He made a lot of money is what he's saying. And he persecuted the church of God, the true church of God. So that's not a good thing. Uh, Two, let's read it. Let's go to Galatians 1. I want you to read it so you don't just take me out my word in it. Galatians 1, 
verses 13 and 14. For ye, Paul says, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen. That's amazing. The grace of God that struck the Apostle Paul and how he's a pattern today for anyone that is doing the same things. You think you're so far from God and that you've sinned and all this stuff? I'm telling you, your testimony compares nothing to the Apostle Paul and Saul and what he did. Have you literally laid slaughter to the church and put them in prison? He'd be like a guy that was leading ISIS today. That's what Saul was. You really think about that. There's only one pure religion that God defines in the Bible. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Only place in your Bible, this is the only pure religion. James is speaking to the scattered tribes of uh, Israel. Okay, that's the context. But we can learn. All the Bible's for our learning. If any man among you seem to be religious and brittleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So, I really don't like the word religion. Okay? Religion has a bad rep, but there's only one pure religion, and that's, well, we just read it. It's visiting the orphans and looking after widows and their afflictions. So if you want to be in pure religion, why don't you look after orphans and those widows in affliction? Don't hold on to the traditions of men because it's not of God. So um, like I said, tonight was a little bit meatier and there's a lot more subject matter and a lot of stuff to unpack. Um, but... I hope there are some things that you learn new. And if you have any questions, feel free to personal message me. Happy to discuss uh, scriptures as long as we stick on point and discuss the scriptures and not what we think about it. Thank you so much.